Hi, I am Jean-Christophe Gauthier, PhD student at the COPL under the supervision of Réal Vallée and Martin Bernier, and I will present to you our recent efforts on the development of a photoacoustic gas remote sensing technique as part of the BOND 2.0 project. The mission statement of the Sentinel Nord project is to develop and deploy cutting edge remote sensing technologies built from innovative photonic engineering to precisely detect and monitor greenhouse gases emission in the field to assess their future impact on the rapidly changing Arctic environment. As it turns out, one of the key issues where remote gas sensing could help researchers is with the monitoring of gas emissions produced by the thawing of the permafrost, which can be clearly seen from the apparition of a constellation of small ponds called thermocarsts. However, many challenges are associated with the deployment of measuring equipment in the north, which requires systems to be reliable, compact, robust, energy efficient, and even more. But how does gas remote sensing typically work in the first place? Usually, gas remote sensing is achieved either with a tunable narrow wavelength laser or by measuring the absorption spectrum using a broadband light source. In the first scenario, the laser's wavelength is chosen to match a selected absorption line of a target gas and then sweep the laser wavelength in and out of it. By calculating the difference in power between the two positions, the concentration of the gas can be deduced. Instead of using a specialized laser to target a specific gas, the second technique uses a broad spectrum light source and then measure the whole absorption spectrum resulting from its propagation in the atmosphere. Knowing that each gas has a unique spectral feature, algorithms can be used to identify the gases present on the optical path and retrieve their concentration. The benefits of using a tunable laser approach include a very precise and fast measurement of the target gas, along with a good commercial availability of compact systems in the near infrared. However, a system is usually designed to measure a single target gas, meaning that if you're looking to measure another type of gas, you must buy another system altogether. This can prove pretty expensive as those systems usually cost around 10K USD or more. And this is for commercial near infrared systems. Uh, so it costs even more if you want to move into the mid infrared where systems are more sensitive. In the case where multi-gas detection is desirable or when the target gas is unknown, the absorption spectrum measurement is preferred. Unfortunately, the measurements can take several minutes and they are a little less precise than what you can get with the tunable laser approach. This is mostly related to the time needed for the spectral measurement and data processing uh, which is needed for these techniques. And again, these systems can be quite expensive because of the need for a spectrograph or monochromator, for instance. Then, how do we make a cheaper system? And is it possible to make it here in the COPL? In order to design such a system, we first have to choose the wavelength region we want to operate in. The best option, in our opinion, is to work in the middle thread since most atmospheric pollutants have clear absorption lines in the 3 to 5 micron region, and that the absorption lines are typically much greater than in the near infrared. Despite the fact that technology in the mid infrared is not as mature as in the near infrared, this hundredfold improvement in absorption for species such as methane alleviates some of the requirements for the light source power and detection sensitivity. However, Mid-infrared lasers are still pretty expensive. Hence, broadband incoherent light sources such as thermal emitters or LEDs that cost around $100 seem the logical choice. But as we stated earlier, spectral measurements require a specialized device, which happen to be both costly and bulky in the mid-infrared. Moreover, the optical power detectors needed to measure tiny variations are also costly and sometimes even require uh, nitrogen cooling, which can be an obstacle for field deployment. Therefore, the question becomes, can we find an alternative to mid-infrared light measurement techniques? A potential solution comes from the photoacoustic effect. Mostly used for in-situ gas detection, its working principle is rather simple. 
First, a time-modulated light source is sent in a cell containing a gas sample. Then, if the gas has absorption lines comprised in the light spectrum, the gas will start to heat, causing it to expand. However, by modulating the light source on and off, for instance, the heating will follow the same modulation. Hence, the dilation-contraction dynamic of the gas will result in a mechanical wave, or acoustic wave, which can then be detected using a simple microphone. While photoacoustic detection is normally designed for in-situ measurements, our goal was to investigate if we could make a remote photoacoustic gas sensing system that would not need spectral measurement. To this end, we assembled the lab setup comprised of a homemade mini infrared broadband light source, a gas cell simulating the atmospheric propagation, a chopper to modulate the light source, and a hermetic detection cell filled with one atmosphere of the gas we want to detect with a small electric microphone. The microphone module we used uh, was from Adafruit and cost about $10 and was linked to a lock-in amplifier synchronized to the chopper frequency to isolate the photoacoustic signal from other sources of noise. The basic principle of our technique works as follows. At first, the broadband light spectrum is represented by a rectangle. When the light passes through the atmospheric cell filled with a set concentration of the target gas, which in our case was methane, some part of the light are absorbed. Then, other gases present in the lab air, such as CO2, will also affect the signal. Finally, when the light arrives in the detection cell, which is filled with the target gas, only the remaining power at the wavelengths corresponding with the methane absorption lines will contribute to the photoacoustic effect. Since there is no other gas in the detection cell, all the other wavelengths corresponding to other gases are ignored. To determine the concentration of the target gas in the optical path, or in this case, in the atmospheric cell, we only have to compare the acoustic signal previously produced in the detection cell to a calibration measurement with no gas in the atmospheric cell. The lock-in signal is then maximum, and we can retrieve the gas concentration by simply looking at the difference in acoustic signal. When done in the lab, the photoacoustic signal can be seen at the oscilloscope in yellow, which closely follows the chopper frequency of 350 Hz in blue. After passing through the lock-in amplifier, the signal is just transformed to a constant current value in millivolts. With this, we were able to test several known concentrations of target gas in the atmospheric cell and measure the corresponding photoacoustic signal. By fitting an exponential function, we can then deduce an unknown gas concentration by simply finding the concentration value corresponding to the observed signal. Because of the curved shape of the fitting function, it means that the system's precision varies with concentration even for a photoacoustic signal with the same standard deviation as you can see here. This means that the precision gets better at lower concentration and a bit worse at high concentration. However, this can be beneficial if we happen to be looking for small amounts of gases. Since we work with an integrated path measurement, the system is unable to differentiate between a homogeneous and heterogeneous distribution of the gas along the propagation distance, as you can see in this example. The measurement units are therefore in ppm meters, where we account for the path length. By multiplying the preceding values by the length of the atmospheric cell, we find our precision in ppm meters for different gas concentrations. For the lowest tested concentration, we found a precision of 5.3 ppm meters. Given that the precision in ppm is directly related to the path length, we believe the system should be sensitive enough to measure ppm variations for path length of about 5 to 10 meters. In summary, we believe that the photoacoustic effect can help make a cheap and compact gas remote sensing system and our preliminary tests show that a ppm level sensitivity is achievable over several meters. Future work on miniaturization and ruggedness could eventually prepare the system for field testing given that it's basically working on batteries and LEDs, 
So we are pretty confident that this could be a reliable tool for a scientist in the Arctic research. I will end this talk by thanking our sponsors and partners for their support and will be happy to answer your questions.